All right, we're out of here. We're gonna make an eagle today. Looks something like this. There'll be a little bit of change here. I'm gonna spin the eagle 180 degrees so his tail will be hanging over the stripes and that way the stars can be shown in the front. You can see the bars and stars all in one. I make these up so I have something to reference while I'm sculpting. You can look at all the angles. Any part of it that would slow me down or trip me up, I made some reference pieces. I made a foot's always a hard one. These are out of cause clay, and then you can bake them. So now it's almost like a 90s toys, the, the wrestling toys, kind of like that same kind of silicone. If it's thin enough, you can actually uh, pose these if you have a metal armature in it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so I did the feet. Here's the wing with all the different feather groups. I'm trying to learn, you know, it's a lot easier to sculpt something when you know what it is. So you got the marginal coverts. These are called alulas. These are secondary coverts, greater coverts. Um, these are a little bit of a bigger section here called the scapulas, which are feathers that are obviously over your scapula. Uh, these are the secondaries and these are the primaries. Um, with eagles, you can kind of think of like the primary feathers are or like your fingers, because their their wings kind of like this. So here's your fingers. If they were to close their wing, they go back up like this. Uh, these kind of come off of uh, past your wrist, like this right here. And then the scapulas are up under your arm. <coughs> but yeah, that's another piece of reference. And uh, finally, I made a little head, so you can look at all the angles. And get started so I made this in um, 1 12th scale I'm pretty sure that's what it is so that each uh, foot is one inch so I can come here and take measurements off of this and easily convert it towards my piece uh, and map it out a little faster so to start for this piece I'm gonna come up here I might change this a little but I'm drawing in my piece of cheesecake. <laughs> kind of represents my eagle head here. Uh, their head's like a big wedge, rounded on the back. Um, so I'm gonna set the tip of this nose as close to this uh, line of sap wood as I can. I want to cut that out. I don't want the beak to have any of that in it. So we'll cut out this. He'll be sitting looking this way. His butt back here. That's how we'll get started.
ever stop to add more gas and then you forget to add the gas? <laughs> So when you're working on a carving, uh, you want to try and, the way I think of it is like downloading a picture in the 90s on the internet, uh, load the image kind of all together. Back in the day, a picture would come up and it would all be super blurry, right? Uh, and it would slowly kind of pixelate a little better. That's how I kind of look at the process of, of carving at first and blocking things in. You want to bring it all out of that blur at the same time together. Um, you don't want to get your wings kind of set and then go right into detailing that before you bring the whole piece together. You want to make sure that everything's looking, you know, right together. You'll start detailing a section of feathers and then realize that the whole wing isn't symmetrical with the other one. And then you've got to go back and either fix it or, you know, do it on your next project. So that's just a little point I like to make. Bring all your primary planes and shapes out together first before you go back in and do, you know, your smaller detail planes and trying to set groups of feathers and anything like that. <clears throat> uh, if, when you think about an eagle and what you're looking at right here and trying to kind of understand these wings is uh, they're kind of sitting there like this. I mean, I can't do it as exaggerated as them, but, you know, just like a chicken wing that you would eat they've got their they're sitting up here like this all of their long feathers that you see hanging down here are actually coming off of their fingers and they're tucking those back and then the secondary row of feathers is coming off of their wrist here and then they've got their smaller feathers coming off of their shoulder up higher uh, but yeah so everything is basically broken up into two groups of feathers here once you hit the wrist on a bird, you got all your primaries. These are your primary feathers, your primary coverts or greater coverts. And these little ones laying over the top here, they're called alulas. They're just kind of like little pointer feathers that lay over the, the tips here. And then you'll hit the wrist. In the back part of here, you got your secondaries, your secondary coverts. And then these are called marginal coverts, which are just kind of up on their shoulder little feathers that are laying down. This purple patch here is actually a different section of feathers that's up on their back here, uh, below this piece, which is called the mantle. Uh, they're called scapulas, and they're called that because they're on the scapula. But, um, so yeah, you got the mantles, which is just another series of kind of scale-like feathers running down here. And you can't see it here, but underneath where these wings would be closed is called the rump which is, you know, just kind of a continuation of those scaled feathers. Uh, their chest has the scaled feathers, uh, and as well as their legs, kind of those fish scale uh, feathers, which usually end about here. You'll have a thicker section, and then their little little skinny legs, which um powerful even though they're skinny. Uh, and down below, you'll have uh, your tail feathers hanging out. Um, with tail feathers a lot of the time you know they can fan out and you'll see a lot of them but a lot of the times when there's tucked in like this you'll get your big 
your first feather, the top one, almost covering all the other ones, and then just kind of layered down from there. Uh, so, like I said, I like to get all the primary planes put in first, which is, you know, the big wings, before I go back and do any secondary planes, which would then be to start dividing into these groups here. I'll go back and I'll mark out these marginal coverts, which will sit up here, you know, basically on the upper part of your arm. And then I'll, I'll go back and set in all these. I'll get the alulas, which will kind of hang down in the front here, and start setting in all these <coughs> covert feathers, this, this line here. And then you've got your long primaries here, which usually go down, and, and wings, they tend to tuck one wing over the other usually. So that's what you're seeing here is, these feathers will be laying over these feathers. Um, go back and set all that in now. Okay, so I've got the marginals laid out here. This uh, upper section of fish scale-like feathers. And then um, I've also got the pointers or alulas laid out, which is just uh, like four feathers that overlap each other right here. Uh, now I'm gonna go in and lay in the coverts and the primaries. Um, one thing to think about when doing feathers like this. So when they fold their wings back, you know, their little chicken wings, all their primary feathers are coming off of their fingers. <clears throat> and then you've got your secondaries hanging down off of their wrist. They tuck, so when they go like this, they tuck their primaries and all the front feathers fold underneath the back layers. They tuck into each other. So, <clears throat> you know, you'll have your secondaries here and then the primary is kind of running out underneath them, as well as uh, up here, they're tucking in underneath this layer of feathers. Um, something to think about. So what are we looking at here with these lines? Um, the mantle feathers, the top ones, will be laying down over these other ones here. Your pointer feathers hanging down in the front. And then you've got this green row of feathers here the lesser covert, secondary coverts, sitting right here, overlapping the greater coverts here in the front, this tiny section, which if, if you're thinking about what's tucked in under here, they're going up, meeting at this wrist, and breaking, overlapped by this back layer here. Then, the longer ones, you all have your secondary feathers, the, the big group here of orange ones, uh, overlapping, the primaries, which will be sticking out a little bit longer than everything else, overlapping each other. Uh, so that's basically what you're looking at underneath the wing. It's kind of confusing to understand how it all works and goes together, how the puzzle pieces fit, but you just gotta really take it apart and try and understand it. And uh, I'm not perfect by any means, believe me. Lesser coverts here, breaking around the wrist joint, overlapping the graders, and swooping back down around. The graders will just kind of be folded up here in the front, which are overlaying this section of the secondaries, which are overlaying the primaries, which are tucked under these primaries. So, that's kind of what we're looking at. We take it all apart. Now I'll go back in and I'll kind of break these up into their zones. Um, birds are pretty smooth. Uh, you know, they're flying through the air, so they want to be streamlined. So you, you don't have to over-exaggerate a lot of these when you go to knock it in. Um, a little is a lot. shape these sections afterwards think about what each feather group's doing this one's kind of you know those round feathers so you can leave this kind of rounded but these ones here are just those flat feathers laying straight back so what i'm going to do is once i get these all set in i'm going to try and make from here to here a flat plane you know uh i don't really want 
want that this dip in it or anything. I'm kind of just a flat layer of feathers laying back down. So I'll, I'll do that. Now. Um, so this is kind of like what I was talking about with bringing things together all at once. So I could have, you know, I could have knocked in these marginal feathers and then just started scaling them. But I like to get every single section in and working together first before I go on to the next layer of detail, which would be adding all the feathers in. Then now I can go back through. I'm going to go back through and, you know, clean up these edges a little and see how more the feathers will lie. This is just getting them roughed in and then I can draw in the feathers and take them all to the next level. My wife was asking me, you see these two lines here? And she's like, why does his chest look so puffed out? Um, aren't they kind of a flat bird? And yes, in some cases, eagles can be really slim looking, uh, but if an eagle has just eaten a, a meal and is full, this section right here called the gullet will actually puff out like this, uh, and you'll get that kind of, almost like a front shield on an eagle. And if I'm making an American Eagle with an American flag, I figured, you know, it shouldn't be a starving American Eagle. So I went with the full color. This guy is happily fed on some fish or some squirrel. So you can't see it since an eagle's covered in feathers, but if you were to peel away all the feathers on an eagle, well, you'd have end up looking like for a bird is a like a vulture. It's a, a featherless eagle looks a lot like a vulture. So a vulture, if you think about them, they've got that like S neck where skull comes back, and then the neck kind of dives forward here and curves back. Uh, it, it's turned right now, so the S is also curved. But the feathers, although they like really. They're quite a plume and they cover a lot. They will still, you'll still see that S in, in the feather pattern. So what I'm doing here is knocking it in a little deeper here where the skull ends and breaks and the neck starts kicking forward. I set that in and I'm gonna flatten right down to it, kind of, um, I wanna say concave, yeah, concave angle right down to the shoulders here and then I'll round it up around here and it'll give you that S in the neck that uh, that you see in an eagle. interesting fact about the toes is that so they connect all here I think this is called the tarsus or something that's a bone right here they all connect to that but then starting on the back and working your way around to the outside this back one has one knuckle on its toe this one has two knuckles in its toe this one has three knuckles in its toe and the final one has four knuckles uh, to help it hold on to things better like branches and stuff is cool. Interesting facts. And you know, it helps to know that when you're sculpting it. Um, 
but this is gonna have one big knuckle in it that you'll think about, or back here, I mean, and then, you know, you can kind of put those in. I mean, most people won't know it, but it's still cool to know it's there. Another little fact about eagle's feet is you'll have the biggest talon back here, which is your killing talon that they use uh, to dispatch all their food. And then as you wrap around again, usually, you know, it's biggest, second biggest, third biggest, and your smallest toe is your outside one. That little one with the four knuckles that helps hold on to everything. Um. If you guys are ever sculpting, uh, carving a shelf like this, it's definitely good to have it pitch from the highest in the center down and out so it can shed water. Man, six-year-old me would be so proud of how much I use crayons. I'm gonna, while I'm right here, I'm gonna set these stars in, I guess. I'm drawing in the covert feathers here, the marginal ones up on their shoulders, the little scales that come down towards the second row here. <clears throat> so th th these are just kind of laid out like this, you know, from the top flopping down like, like uh, fish scales. <laughs> um, you don't want to make them perfectly uniform, you know, things in nature aren't, there'll be some variants, uh, usually they'll overlap each other, you know, top down, these ones on top, the ones beneath them, but every once in a while that changes too, you know, just like a messy hair day, you know, get like right here, like I tuck that one underneath this one, instead of over it. And again, I'm not going to carve any of this too deep. These are kind of just suggestions. That's how I'm going to see how it looks at least. I need to go back and carve deeper. Jordy, carve deeper. Okay, so there's one shoulder. You kind of constantly think about how how they're running too. You know, it's kind of like shingles on a house. So. This one's on top of this one's on top of this one's on top of this one. So when you're drawing them in, you want to think about that. And also the wind's coming back over it, you know, that's really all. Up here on this section, the mantle kind of has the same colors. As opposed to up on the head, um, 
They have almost like tiny versions of these feathers, you know, like, like you'd see back in the day, riding with the ink pen, little tiny ones, all over their head, pointing, starting from the front, pointing backwards like that, you know, just the same way they run in the wind. Use like a three-quarter inch piece of crayon for a week. 